Hey guys, today we're going to learn about torque. And this tape is mainly for the uh, students who are opting out and don't get to come into school. Um, so uh, the students that were able to come to class have had all of this in the classroom. So for them, this is just review if they want to watch it, but that's it. Uh, and this purpose of this is to introduce the people at home for the mini lab, which is taped uh, on a uh, recorded on a different video, um, which will be the best we can do for the for the lab activity that people do hands-on in class. So anyway, torque. Today we're going to find out what it is. Uh, there's an equation that goes for torque because we have equations for everything. We'll work through some simple examples, and then finally, uh, we'll I will start you off on the mini lab. So to begin here, uh, last time we saw that uh, linear quantities and linear concepts have analogs for rotational stuff. So linear displacement, for example, there we go, uh, which we symbolize with X is straight line distance or straight line displacement. And the rotational analog for that is radians of rotation, how far something turns in radians. Likewise, linear velocity in meters per second has a rotational analog of radians per second, which is how fast something's spinning. Slow linear uh, angular velocity versus fast angular velocity. Um, which is equivalent to something moving slowly in a straight line or fast in a straight line. Same thing with acceleration, linear acceleration, and angular or rotational acceleration. Well, it turns out that these are not the only quantities where that's true. We have analogs for other things as well. And the one we're interested in today is force. So a force is something that makes something move in a straight line or changes its motion in a straight line. So you push on something, it starts to go if it is a net unbalanced force. So force is something that makes something move in a straight line. And yes, we measure it in newtons. Well, torque is rotational force. It's the force that causes something to twist or to rotate. And if we have a net unbalanced torque, then the rotation of some object is going to change in some way. Okay, so what is torque? Well, for this diagram here, this line represents a stick, like, say, this ruler here. And the dot at the end represents a pivot point where it can rotate around. So if I pull on this, it's going to rotate around my fingers here like this. This is what it's going to go. I'm going to try to hold this end steady, and we're going to rotate it around. Now, if I hang a little weight far out here, it's going to pull it down, and it's going to rotate. Now, from your own experience in common, uh, common sense, you probably know that if I hang the weight closer in, it doesn't twist my arm as much. It's, it's uh, easier for me to resist that twisting. Uh, if I want to produce the same amount of twisting motion, I have to hang a greater weight from the middle of the ruler than I do from the end to produce the same amount of, of twisting motion. So if I'm going to go closer in, like hang the force from here instead of out at the end, I've got to use a greater force, okay? So torque is the way that we represent the twisting force here. So torque, it turns out, depends on the amount of force that is hanging from the, uh, from the stick, and it depends on how far out from the pivot point that weight is. So this might be as, as uh, difficult to, for me to hold up to support as, this. A small force out at the end does as much twisting as a big force that's closer in. Right, so the units of torque turn out to be newtons, newton meters, because force is always in newton and meters as a distance is always in meters for us. So newton meters is the units of torque. Now there's also a little bit more to this, and so I'm going to show you this diagram here. This, what that we just did, assumed that the forces are always perpendicular to the stick, that the stick is horizontal and the forces are pulling straight down. But that's not always the case. So sometimes we have to throw in this extra term here, this sine theta. Now, what does this mean? Um, suppose that instead of the force pointing straight down, perpendicular to that moment arm or to that lever arm, what if it's coming in at an angle, like from the upper right here? Okay. Now, not all of the force is trying to push the stick straight down. Some of that force is trying to push the stick sideways into this, uh, into this pivot. So 
To figure out the vertical component of the force, we have to throw in this sign term. So this equation here, the way it's written here, this is the way it appears in your book and also in the AP gouge. And torque is abbreviated by a capital tau. Uh, that's the Greek letter uh, tau. It has this curved thing on the top of the straight thing. So it looks sort of like a cursive T. Um, I don't have a letter to type that, so I have to show you the handwritten one. Um, R is the distance from the center of rotation, and F is the force. And then sine theta is the uh, theta is the angle between the lever arm and the direction of the force. So if the force is straight down, this angle here will be 90 degrees from horizontal to vertical. That's 90 degrees. And the sine of 90 degrees is 1. So if, it, if the force is perpendicular, all the torque is there. All the force produces torque. If it's coming in like at a 45 degree angle here, then this is a 45 degree angle. We take the sine of 45 degrees and we'd get less torque for the same amount of force. Now, in the extreme example, where the force is uh, aligned with the lever arm so that all the force is pointing, is uh, focused right at that pivot, now you have no torque at all because the angle is zero degrees and the sine of zero is zero. Uh, likewise, if the, um, uh, if the force is, is pulling directly away from this pivot, no torque. An example of that with the stick here is if we pull straight down on the stick, it's not trying to twist, it's just trying to be pulled down. If the stick is only being twisted if it's being pushed down at some angle, uh, if, it's, uh, if, it's, um, if the force is not aligned with the stick. Um, if I push straight down on the stick, no torque. If I pull straight down on the stick, no torque. All right, now this may make even more sense when I show you some examples here. And the arithmetic on this is not particularly complicated. So let's imagine we have a, uh, a balance beam here or potentially a balance beam. So we have a stick and we are going to just balance on a fulcrum and we're gonna ignore the mass of the stick for now, okay? We're gonna assume that it either has no mass or that it is perfectly balanced so we can ignore it. So look at this blue one first here, okay? Um, and we want to know the torque produced by this thing. So we have 10 newtons, and it is the uh, lever arm is four meters from the point of rotation. So we have 10 newtons, four meters out. And the torque, you probably already see it, is 40 newton meters. That's the amount of torque. Now you guys do this one, the red one. We have 10 newtons, two meters out. So how much torque is that going to produce? 20 Newton meters, not too su surprising. Now, since both of these torques are acting in the same direction, they're trying to twist this thing clockwise, um, we can add them up. They have the same units and they're working together to do, to do the same thing. So we can figure out the total torque or the net torque on the right side of the fulcrum here simply by adding these up and we get 60 Newton meters of torque. I'm gonna put this over here so it unclutters it. Now, um, the book considers upward so we, when we have our lever arm going out to the right and we go upward, the book considers that positive torque. And the way we have it written here, this would be negative torque. Uh, trying to make the thing go clockwise would be negative torque and trying to go counterclockwise would be positive torque. I personally have trouble remembering that sometimes. So what I normally do is I just write a little arrow here indicating which direction will make the thing rotate. So in this case, it's going to make it rotate clockwise, so make a little curved arrow that goes that way. So now what we want to do is figure out where we would have to hang a 20 Newton weight on the other side of the fulcrum so that it will balance. So if the torque on the left side is equal to the torque on the right side. And the way we do that is we know that we have to produce 60 Newton meters of torque in the other direction, the clockwise direction in this case. And we know that we have 20 Newtons of force. So we're using the same formula here, torque is force times the distance or force times the radius. We know there's 20 newtons of, of force. We know it's going to produce 60. So that means it has to be how far out? It has to be three meters out, which means if we hang this three meters from the fulcrum, it will balance. And that's actually what we're going to do in the, in the lab. Uh, you, if you haven't looked at that already, take a look at it. 
Um, it's a series of challenges where you're given so many weights, you have to hang them on a stick and figure out where to place them so the thing will balance. Okay, so uh, I will introduce that in a moment here. Um, and we will, let's see, what did we do? We learned what torque is. We saw the equation for torque. Now, usually we do not have to use that sign um, uh, function in it because most of the torques we deal with, the force will be 90 degrees from the, uh, from the lever arm, but you do need to know it exists uh, because it pops up once in a while. We showed you some examples and I'm gonna get you for the mini lab soon. So, very good. Uh, remember also there are homework problems. I suggest you do the homework problems after you do the lab. I'm hoping that even if you watch the video at home, watching the lab will help torque make more sense to you problems that you do, the homework problems that you do will make a lot more sense if you have a gut understanding of work. All right, thanks, and we will see you next time.